Hey, folks, welcome back to the Rugby Ascendant segment here on Chris White Africa and the Rugby Ascendant channel. My guest today, and I'm going to mess up his name. I already I already got the, the Samoan slash Tongan surname wrong. So, um, Alex, do you pronounce it Maon? Is that how it's pronounced? Or? It's uh, Maon, so Maon, thanks okay. for making Okay. Oh, Mon. All right. Well, okay. There's, there's a town in Botswana called Maon. So I'll think of that. Alex Mon. Okay. Alex Mon is with me today. Uh, a starting prop for uh, Rugby Atlanta. Alex, how's it going? It's going pretty good. It's uh, hopefully the last two weeks of the season. So we're doing pretty good so far. <laughs> well, one way or another, it's definitely the last two weeks of the season. Whether it's the last two exactly. weeks for you guys or for Rooney will be the question. Let's hope that you guys get past this weekend. Of course, what we're referring to is the conference final for the Eastern Conference first ever conference final because uh, in season four, we've got this going on now, Eastern and Western conferences and rugby ATL finished top of the log, despite uh, dropping the last game of the season to the New England free Jacks, 22, 19. And so Alex and, and, and rugby Atlanta will be facing rugby night in New York for a home game at Lupo field there on the campus of life university this weekend. Speaking of life, Alex, um, I think that you went to life. Did you not? I did. Uh, Started there in 2014, graduated there in 2018. Um, got to spend some very pleasurable years there. I <laughs> watched the program grow and, of course, collected some silverware uh, along the way. So that's always fun for the uh, rugby experience and something to uh, tell the kids about down the line. So Absolutely. And life is uh, now I've never seen life 15 sides play, but I have seen the sevens at the collegiate rugby championship. Now, did you play sevens or just 15s? Uh, no. <laughs> when people ask uh, why, uh, why I don't play sevens, I, I politely tell them that uh, I get paid to run through people, not around them. So <laughs> <laughs> not, not really this, the body type I need for, uh, for sevens. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. But I mean, occasionally you get some guys that are pretty bulky that actually go out and play sevens. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but it's a track beat. I mean, it's very different than 15, exactly. same, same exactly. size pitch and, 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 and uh, less than half the guys on the pitch. So if you get mm -hmm. burned, it's all over. I mean, look at Perry right. Baker and Carlin Isles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're just gone. All right. So, so, but, but you played there at life, which has been kind of mm -hmm. one of the pipelines for rugby ATL. Not, never mind the fact that, that you play on the same field as life university, but a lot of your teammates also played at life. And then a fair number of them uh, come from South Africa. That's another pipeline. Right. And for some strange reason, there's a, a pipeline from the Colorado Raptors. Uh, although that'll tail off yeah. now that they're not in the league anymore. So what was, what was it like there playing at life? Uh, obviously you, you won a few things. Um, it was a great experience or what? Oh, of course. It's, uh, it's probably as close to a professional environment that you could get, especially at the collegiate level. Um, you know, it's you wake up 6 a.m. morning, uh, any particular morning, you have lifts, lifts straight to class, class straight to practice, uh, do your homework, rinse and repeat. <laughs> so it's very much you're dialed in, you know, basically all the time. And so rugby is obviously besides school and graduating and whatnot, rugby is your job. So, um, and you come in with that mindset and the coaches are very quick to remind you if, if you fall off the pace a little bit, but that's also what helps breed um, good rugby players as well as, is, uh, that constant pressure. Also that competition that comes in because, you know, with life being, quote unquote, a powerhouse in USA rugby collegiately, you know, you have the best rugby players wanting to come there. So it's, um, if you don't perform <laughs> one week, you could be on the bench the next or even off the roster completely. So, um, and that was kind of the environment there. And then also having Scott Lawrence as the head coach for the first, um, more or less up until my junior year at, you know, he brings that attention to detail that you get towards, uh, you know, the national team and, and stuff like that to where, hey, if you miss a tackle, it's that very well could be a try and that try could lose us the game. So, um, you know, that's what Scott brought to the table. And, you know, that's it definitely impacts you as a college player and, you know, someone who's growing into becoming an adult. Um you see how much attention to detail matters. And I think further on down the line, once rugby ends and, you know, everybody goes along their merry way, that'll probably help you professionally as well. So, well, you make a couple of good points there. Number one, uh, 
Coach Scott Lawrence in attention to detail. That's that's something that uh, definitely is associated with that man. He definitely is focused mm. on detail. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, you know, if you miss a tackle, it could be a try. I mean, the difference in last weekend's game this past Sunday's was clearly that back breaker at the end of the first half when um, ATL was driving and then right. lost the ball and just uh, it's the free jacks brought all the way back down and got to try that was a backbreaker that was uh so yeah. that's it really comes home to roost uh, that philosophy when you see something like that on the pitch yeah it does and you know the nice little earful that the coaches give you, slash, you know, <laughs> um other teammates and stuff like that give you it's 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 a humbling experience but it also you know gives you a little gently gently reminder to <laughs> either put up or shut up basically. Now, do you have a favorite position? I mean, either hooker or tight head prop or is one that you favor? Or are you just happy to be on the pitch? Uh, you know, every, every season seems to change, you know, it's um, this year, it's especially my role. It seems like is, is to help kind of fill in when needed. Um, so that, that's, that was a good thing about it. Life is working with, um, Blake or Blake Bradford, our forwards coach, he, um, normally I played, you know, tight head prop and, but he also made sure that if you played one position in the front row, you could play any position. So, um, you know, the good thing for me is, is that me being able to play all three positions helps me, you know, gives me a great chance to one, get on the roster, but then two also be in the starting spot. So, um, this year it's very, been much, uh, a, a coin flip sometimes on where I'll play. Um, but that's obviously, you know, to a street, a strategic point and that's up to the coaches. So, um, you know, it's really just letting, letting yourself be along for the ride and say, Hey, you know what? I'm on the field. So I can't really complain too much. Now, a lot of your teammates uh, coming from places not accustomed to the humidity and the uh, heat in the summertime, the deep south, with the Major League Rugby season starting several weeks later because of the adjustment for the for the pandemic. Uh, we've definitely seen this adjustment for the South Africans, most of them, not all, I, one of them's from, from a part of the country is tropical, but most of them, it's been a big adjustment for them. Also, Stephen Brett is a coach, it's been an adjustment for him. Uh, but you're from Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, correct? Correct. Yeah, so it's so. probably not been much of an adjustment for you. Uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the humidity is about the same, but you add about, you know, five or six degrees and, you know, it's, uh, that makes all the difference. Um, you know, I like to compare Georgia and especially where uh, we play at life. Um, not a lot of people know this, but the actual field was built on a, uh, a swamp. Right. So it's so it's even more muggy than the air around. It. Um, and then plus when it rains, it, it floods, basically. But uh, that's a completely different story. But I like to describe it to people who aren't used to it as you're literally drinking the air. You know, that's how thick the air is. It's um, it's basically the exact opposite of uh, Denver or uh, Utah or whatnot. Uh, the the air is literally so thick <laughs> that your body struggles to separate the moisture and the, and the oxygen <laughs> so well I've, I've been on the pitch with you guys down there and i concur but uh, i have to say this I, I didn't have to try to play on the game so it would have been a lot yeah. harder expedient energy trying to suck that oxygen out right right and the the i will say the saving grace is is the majority of our home games have been at nighttime um but, you know, especially Toronto sharing the our facilities with us and whatnot, you know, when that sun is out and you're playing on the turf and it's just as humid at night, it's it's quite suffocating. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, I, I get that. And I honestly, um, unfortunately, one of the big things we see in Major League Rugby is, is that uh, most of the teams are playing on or a lot of teams are playing on artificial turf or AstroTurf, mm -hmm. or, you know, the equivalent. Um, it's, 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 I've never been a fan of that. I've, I've played football and played uh, rugby on our official turf. Yeah. And aside from the, the, the turf burns and the carpet burns, it's just, it's right. not, it's not the same as hitting, hitting the solid ground. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, the good thing is, is, you know, here at Atlanta is, is the coaching staff recognize that as well as the management staff. And, you know, we've made it a point or that, excuse me, they have made it a point, you know, as the seasons progress to, us being able to have an opportunity to train on grass. Um, Cause to your point with 
turf burns and the whole given the surface and turf and whatnot it's a it's completely different than grass and you know it, it really wears and tears on the joints so thankfully we've been able to have the people to go out and find those grass fields and unfortunately they're much fewer and far between now <laughs> um but thankfully we've been able to transition to practicing on grass more you know more than probably most teams have which i think is a testament to us having phenomenal depth going into the playoffs mm -hmm. you know not a whole lot of injuries going on everything everybody's back and healthy so um and at the end of the day it's all about who has the healthiest roster absolutely and you know the other thing too is that as a front rower not really an issue for you but those back rowers um kicking on artificial turf it's a completely different game that ball does yeah. things it doesn't do on natural uh -huh. turf yeah <laughs> exactly it can it can roll 30 yards or it can bounce 20 bounce 20 yards in the air so <laughs> take your pick <laughs> yeah and and you're expecting it to roll down the field and suddenly somebody in the wing just runs underneath it catches on the fly and you gotta right. try yeah exactly. very different now now you the humidity thing uh you your your major league rugby career didn't start with rugby ATL. Didn't you start with NOLA? Did you actually play down there or did you just sign with them? Well, no. So so funny enough, um, during the 2018 season, yeah, 18, um, I had actually signed with Atlanta and then because Atlanta wasn't playing any games because, you know, we were entering into uh, the next year, um, they put me on loan to New Orleans. So I got to spend the last four games of the season there with them. Um, you know, obviously a nice little, not training wheels, but get to actually fully experience what kind of the MLR was like in terms of not only the playing experience, but also traveling and then also how how players conduct themselves day in and day out in terms of recovery, nutrition, working out, film review, X, Y, and Z. Because um, obviously it's a it's a pretty big step up from the collegiate level up to professional. Oh, it absolutely is. Um, so you've traveled with the Eagles. Um, I think you went to um, the, the the tour they had with Romania and Tonga back. So were you an Eagles select? Uh, and then is that something you're hoping for to play for the Eagles? Is that something you aspire to do? Oh, of course, it's, you know, to always make it back into the Eagle squad is, um, I'd be lying to you to say if, you know, every, every person who, you know, doesn't want to represent their nation, you know, in the, in the chosen profession that they love, you know, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it, it comes down to performance on the field and, you know, also, you know, if you fit into the strategic plan by, by the national team coaches, um, you know, so um, at the end of the day, if, if I do get a call, phenomenal, I'll be there with bells on. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, if, if not, it's just a good excuse to keep working harder and, you know, always improving. Well, that's a fantastic philosophy. You know, I've interviewed Gary Gold a number of times and we talk about this specifically. And, and I said, what about major league rugby? And essentially, I mean, not, not his, not his words verbatim, but essentially major league rugby has given him um, uh, over a dozen um, scouting teams now that, that, you know, he can look at all these players from North America or from the U S not North right. America from the U S and actually see guys rather than have to travel to some remote place to watch guys play in a club right. or go to university. So exactly gives you a chance to be seen more often. Listen, Alex, um, this uh, a final question here. This weekend, the, the conference final, you feeling good about it? Uh, Rooney's a tough opponent. You guys ready for it? You're prepped? Third time's a charm, baby. <laughs> 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 um, no, of course. And, you know, that, that goes back into, you know, Scott and the, and the coaching staff's attention to detail. Um, I can bet all the money that I have that if you ask Scott a random play, from any one of Rooney's 16 games, not even including, you know, the games they played against us, he could probably tell you, you know, to the minute of what they do, um, which it, it, it kind of, as a player that kind of, it, it inspires, but it also doesn't let you have any excuses in terms of your own review and preview and stuff like that. Um, so it, it, it helps you go that extra mile. So ultimately at the end of the day, you know, we're going to, of course, have our game plan. They're going to have theirs. 
and then at the end of the day it's 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 always how everything goes in sports it's who can execute under pressure well alex and uh, thankful oh go so, no 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 okay and thankfully you know, I, finishing, I, no, thankfully what i was gonna say thankfully we'll have you know around 3500 fans cheering us on from there and you know the nice humidity from the georgia heat and and stuff going for our way and then hopefully at the end of 80 minutes we'll uh, be booking our trip to the final well it should be raucous that's going to be a big crowd eh? you guys uh, went out to utah that was a huge crowd out there for the utah game it's nice to see the crowd start to show up again after restrictions mm-hmm. are lifted a little bit yeah. because it's kind of artificial early in the season with no crowds and only a handful of people right right exactly and thankfully it's uh you know just i think I think uh, Joe Marler said it best. You know, it, it just feels completely different when when there's fans in the stands. It, it brings that little extra ump um, to your energy levels and stuff like that, um, as well as, you know, just <laughs> when we were in Boston last week, just some of the heckling, just it, <laughs> you can't help but laugh at it. You know, <laughs> some people take it seriously. Me, I just have a nice little chuckle under my breath. <laughs> just well, I, <laughs> having watched the game, I have to tell you that the microphones, the field microphones, were picking mm. up a lot of the heckling. So I was laughing yeah. myself at some of that stuff. Oh, it was, it's phenomenal, and you know you can't beat that as an athlete because <laughs> you know it, it, it just brings that whole environment to it. So cool beans. All right, listen, uh, Alex uh, Moan, uh, did I pronounce correctly? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for coming on with us on Rugby Center. Appreciate it. Best of luck in the conference uh, final this week, and hopefully uh, Rugby ATL, the Rattlers, will bring it home and then either play Utah or L.A. Um, if, if, if somehow you, if you win and Utah wins, I think that's a home game for you guys then. But if L.A. wins, you're out there. Hey, I've, no, I've never actually been to L.A., so it is what it is. <laughs> Well, with, 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 at the risk of offending people from the City of Angels, you ain't missing much, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in L.A. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, thanks a lot. You have a, a, a good luck this weekend. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Have a good, great day.